we are in the middle of nowhere in Serbia and we cannot get out of this country. <laughs> no matter how fast we drive or how many roads we take or how many borders we cross. So it's not gonna happen. Wait, how did this happen? Well, unfortunately, due to last minute injuries, jet lag and a car that wouldn't start, I now only have one day to set up four hydrographs and do granulometry along the entire river instead of the planned four days. This wasn't supposed to happen. We were supposed to have four days to set up four hydrographs and do granulometry, which was already an insanely short amount of time. I just got off the phone with Catherine and thankfully she figured out our granulometry problem. She found a group of Albanian high school students that will help her do the protocol. So now we just have to show up tomorrow morning and explain to the students the entire protocol and yeah, like something about sediment. See, Catherine from an NGO called Toka from Northern Albania called to let us know that the Valbona Valley has three small hydropower plants being built in a national park and that turbines will be arriving any day now. Valbona River, particularly for Albanians, is um, it's the home of all the legends and poetry. Um, mm. Valbona is like the Shangri-La of, of Albania. It's the mystical land in the high mountains, which is almost impossible to get to where the strong men and the beautiful women live with the nature and it's it's really um i think the idea of valbona being destroyed for albanians is is like a piece of their identity being being torn up and shredded mm -hmm. and flushed. there's 14 hydropowers planned all but one of them are run river which means that you take the river and you put it in a tube you, you transport that water three four five kilometers away at which point you drop it from some height onto turbines. So by using this tunnel system, you create higher pressure and you turn a turbine and then you make some electricity, at which point the water goes back into the river. So people always say this runner river hydropower is super green because you know the water comes out of the river and it goes right back in again. So nothing changes, you know, but it comes in six kilometers later. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that how they plan these things is yes, it goes back into the river and then straight into another tunnel. So first of all, for the three to six kilometers of the tunnel, there is no river, it's gone. That would be bad enough to sacrifice some kilometers, um, but then it just goes into another one. So basically the entire river disappears. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when people think hydropower, they think dams. And people are always coming here and saying, oh, where are they gonna put the dam? But in fact, our way of thinking, this is even worse because you know, a dam, at least you get a lake or something, but this, there's no water, it's gone. And some of the ones planned in Valbona will bypass villages, so they will lose their they're drinking an irrigation water and they think it's like we've lived here for 300 years and where can we go now it's, it's, they see it they see the killing of the river as the disappearing of the river as, as also a real um, act of hostility and aggression against them as a people that they're just being wiped wiped away mm -hmm. so the problem here is how do you collect a useful amount of data in a short amount of time what is useful well we're not gonna come to the Valbona Valley to collect data to publish papers. What we wanna collect data for is to do like our own environmental impact assessment kind of, because the Valbona Valley wants to fight these hydropower plants and they don't have access to any of the environmental assessments done by the companies. And the locals here speculate that actually there was no environmental impact assessment done. If the locals can collect some sort of data and show, hey, I know you guys haven't done environmental impact assessment, but we have, and actually you're going to be destroying blah, 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 then maybe they can win their case. So that's why the plan is to set up some hydrographs so that Toka and the other locals can monitor their river themselves. And also why we want to do gravelometry because it's something that can be done once before and after a dam is built. We're at the entering Serbia from Hungary and we're being extorted for 
350 euros because this beautiful old Volkswagen is hiding a bunch of scientific equipment and they think we're rich kings and queens. So how long have we been here? Four hours? We've been here four hours maybe? I think even more, the whole day. So we've been here the whole day and um, we still can't get this damn form. We tried to leave and they said, no, we need a form to leave and we need another, We need to pay for that form also. So basically, yeah, we, we're stuck in Serbia until we pay 350 euros. We were supposed to talk to some high school students in Valbona Valley, which is in Northern Albania. Um, tomorrow morning but unfortunately that's not gonna happen because we are in the middle of nowhere in Serbia and we cannot get out of this country <laughs> no matter how fast we drive or how many roads we take or how many borders we cross so it's not gonna happen we don't know what to do We're about to cross to the Albanian border and when I say about I still mean we're 50 meters from the border so it's estimated about another five hours <laughs> um, but if we make it through it will be three days and we would have finally made it into Albania <laughs> So what a hydrograph is, is basically just a graph that monitors river discharge versus time. So in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is set up some simple river gauges. So basically we're just going to drill rebar into bridges and put some markings on the rebar, like a ruler for example. In case everything fails, at least Catherine and Toka and the rest of the locals will still be able to monitor river level. And then we can use river level to get discharge, eventually. In addition to going and setting up these um, water gauges, what we're gonna do is we're going to record, uh, try to record the discharge at this water level using an app. We're gonna see how it goes. Apparently this app has never been tested in a real river before, only in channelized rivers. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna to try to get the bathymetry of the river. So what that means is we're gonna walk across and just measure at every meter, we're gonna measure the depth of the river. And yeah, hopefully that way we get discharge and we get a uh, water gauge set up. So we just finished recording a video of the river using the app um, and then we input the bathymetry info also into the app hoping that like the way the app works basically it just calculates how f like how fast pixels are moving across the screen and so that gives you the surface water speed and with the bathymetry it interpolates the overall discharge of uh, the river and it doesn't work <laughs> I mean we didn't actually get a value so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna contact the app team and see if they can process our video properly what do you think Catherine how do you feel about us having set up all of these gauges teaching like doing the granulometry and uh, yeah the, like making one discharge measurement no I feel uh, really positive and excited and happy about uh, about everything we've been doing. It didn't go uh, the way we expected it to, but it's Albania. <laughs> like, it's Actually, it's life. Um, but also, you wouldn't live here if you were going to get upset by that. I mean, I think the important thing, um, always, but also in this situation, is, is to start, right? Because before we had nothing and we didn't know how to do anything. Now, um, we know how to do it, we just don't know why it's not working, but that's, that's in advance. If you're not, if things aren't working and you're not making mistakes, then that means you're not trying hard enough, right? You're not doing something that's challenging. I, you know, I just think it's so exciting that, that we can do this now. You know, me, Liridan, just spent three intensive days learning how to do this. 
Yeah, but I mean, I think this is incredibly valuable. And so, because it's not only about knowing how to do this, it's knowing about how to approach a problem and and what kind of experts you can draw on and how to think about it and and clever ways, you know I mean? Like, so much of this has been like, oh, this was supposed to work like this, but it didn't. Oh, but our goal is to do this, so how about we do it that way? Oh yeah, that works, you know? It's like, it's very important to be able to think that way. Mm -hmm. And if more people can come, I mean, this is about, um, you know, basics of the river, morphology and characteristics of the river, but we still don't know anything about fish or birds or otters, except I'm sure they're under there. Um, bears, I mean, nothing has been studied here. It's, it's wide open, and so I think, you know, maybe maybe foreign researchers don't want to come and live here for, for the next 10 years doing ongoing monitoring, but by God, they could work, there could be such a beautiful collaboration with the local people. And then all these kids who are so excited about doing it as well, I mean, I hear from the University of Tirana that nobody wants to study biology because they don't think you can have a job doing it. And they don't realize that like playing in the river is, is biology. <laughs> So there's it's just so many beautiful ways in which it can work. But so yeah, I hope more people will come.